Hey everybody, uh, my name is Natalie Baker and I am one of the managing article editors for Kinu Law Review. I'm going to do a quick step-by-step -step guide to how I would blue book a specific citation, which you've got right in front of you hopefully. We're going to be editing the citation that says Stephen Winter, The Meaning of Undercolor of Law, Michigan Law Review, 1992. Just a quick note, being good at blue booking, you might have heard by now, is not about memorizing the rules. In fact, and I'm not sure that's possible. Being good at blue booking is being comfortable flipping through the blue book to find different rules that apply in the specific citation that's in front of you. So it's super important to just be willing to do the process for every single citation that's in front of you. So with that said, let's get started. I've already told you that this is a law review article, and the reason that that matters is that the blue book is basically divided in half. The first half is style rules, the, the second half are rules specific to publications, and then in the back you've got some tables. So what you want to do is, now that you know this is a law review article, you want to turn to the very first page and find out where the rules for law review articles are. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that law review counts as a periodical material. Periodical materials are like things that are getting published regularly by the same source. Right, so magazines, newspapers, um, and law review articles. And so you can see right here that uh, rule 16 is what covers periodical materials. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to turn to rule 16. Rule 16, periodical materials. We're going to be asking you to list not just rule 16, but we want to know, you know, was rule 16.3 triggered? Was rule 16.6? F triggered. We want y'all to be specific. You can see in you know an overview of basic citation forms, and that's going to be your starting place for basic citation forms. Rule sixteen point one. It's divided into five different types of publications. You do want to know whether you've got a consecutively paginated or non-consecutively paginated journal. I don't know why, um, but you do. So the way that you figure out whether the journal is consecutively paginated or non-consecutively paginated is basically just whether each issue starts out on page one or whether each issue is continuing on with consecutive page numbers for the entire volume. So what you're going to want to do is see whether the issue that you're currently looking at started on page one or if it continued on from the previous issue in its pagination. So go ahead and um, search Stephen Winter, The Meaning of Undercolor of Law, and it'll be one of the top results. It'll bring you to the Michigan Law Review page. You'll see up above the title of the article here that you can go to volume 91, issue three. So click issue three at the top of the page. So if this was the first issue of a volume, you wouldn't actually know whether it's a consecutively paginated um, journal or not because all first issues, no matter what, are going to start with page one. Fortunately here you don't have to worry about that because we're in issue three. So all you really need to do is click front matter and go down to the table of contents and you can see the very first article is actually the one that we're citing. And it starts on page 323. So there's no way that this journal is uh, non-consecutively paginated because it's not starting on page one in the beginning of the issue. It's a lot just for this little tiny thing, I know. Um, now that we know that we are in a consecutively paginated journal, we can see that this is the general structure that we're gonna be using for the citation. We're gonna have the author first, then we're gonna have the article name in italics, and then we're going to have the volume of the law review, the name of the law review, page number that the article starts on, page number that the specific citation is referring to, and the year of publication. So now that you know the general structure, you want to go 
to Auclair. You want to go to the next the next rule, or I guess you would say sub rule. So it says right here um, in 16.2 author for signed materials. Uh, signed means there's an author associated with the piece. For signed materials appearing in periodicals, follow rule 15.1, but print in ordinary Roman type. Ordinary Roman type is just a fancy way of saying don't do anything to the type. Don't use small caps, don't italicize it, don't bold it, not that you would ever bold anything in law review, but just use regular print. So make sure in your citation that the author's name doesn't have any formatting to it. And then go to rule 15.1. Okay, so this is the process that we're talking about, just being willing to flip back and forth between the rules. Rule 15.1 is about how you treat author names. And it says, the first time a work is cited, always give the author's full name as it appears on the publication. So go to the publication and look and see how this dude's name is written. I am seeing Stephen, spelled with a V, L dot winter. So let's go to the example. We've got Stephen. But they only wrote winter. They didn't do the middle initial L. So you want to go in there and you want to add that middle initial. There's sub rules here. You can look at those, but you can see they don't apply. There's rules for two authors. There's rule for more than two authors, etc., etc. Doesn't apply to us. So we can now go back to rule 16. So we left off at 16.2 author. Now that that's done, we've got the title of the article. Just happens to be the next rule. <laughs> uh, rule 16.3 title. Cite the full periodical title as it appears on the title page, but capitalize according to rule eight. So that's two things you're supposed to do right there. First, you gotta check how the title appears on the title page and then you got to capitalize properly. Look at how the title appears on the front page. We've got the meaning of, and then a quotation mark, under color of, quotation mark, law. Let's check what we were given. And this is pretty subtle, but I'm seeing a quotation mark in the wrong place. And that's a tricky one to catch. This is how detailed you gotta be, and I totally know that it's hard, but that's why we're doing this practice. Um, so as you can see in the actual article, the second quotation mark goes after of, not after law. So go on in and move that quotation mark in the title so that it's not after law anymore, but instead is after of. Everything else looks correct. And now we wanna do what it says here, which is to go to rule eight to see how we're supposed to capitalize. So let's do it. Eight, capitalization. Headings and titles, that's what we're doing. So for your reference, you know, when you're putting down the rules that you use, this is eight A, not just rule eight. Capitalize words in a heading or title including the initial word, which is just the first word. They have to say everything fancy here, don't they? Do not capitalize articles, conjunctions, or prepositions when they are four or fewer letters, unless they begin the heading or title or immediately follow a colon. Such a simple thing made so complicated. <laughs> okay, so this is basically saying you want to capitalize the substantial words and not capitalize tiny words that are like the glue between the substance. I don't know if that's helpful. So nouns, verbs, adverbs, and any word that is more than four letters is going to get capitalized. So let's do it word by word. The usually would be considered an article but it's the first word in the title, so it gets capitalized. Meaning gets capitalized of less than four letters, and I guess you'd call that a preposition. Certainly not noun, verb, adjective, adverb, etc. I'm pretty sure under is a preposition, but it doesn't matter, because it's more than four letters. Anything more than four letters gets capitalized. Color, noun, capitalized, of preposition, I think, less than four letters as well. 
not capitalized. Law, noun, capitalized. Okay, now let's go back to where we were, which was rule 16.3. And then in case you haven't already caught this from when we did the basic citation form, you're also gonna wanna make sure that the title itself is italicized. So to review, um, when you're putting those rules down that you're doing, at this point, you would have put down rule 16.1 because you used the basic citation form in the structure. You're going to want to say you did 16.2, which helped you with the author, rule 15.1. You've done the title, 16.3. see what's next. So we've established that we're in a consecutively paginated journal, so we are going to use rule 16.4. Not going to use rule 16.5, which is for non-consecutively paginated journals. So 16.4 says... Cite works found within periodicals that are consecutively paginated throughout an entire volume by author, title of work, volume number, periodical name, first page of the work, page or pages on which specific materials appear, and year enclosed in parentheses at the end of the citation. This is basically reciting what you saw in the basic citation forms, but it's really helpful to like go back through that again because it's really easy to miss stuff. So make sure that the order is right again. So some journals maintain separate but consecutive pagination with different page numbering systems. Page numbering looks normal to me, so let's not worry about that. Then it's got a rule on special issues, doesn't apply here. Then it's got a rule for no volume number. Skim this stuff. It might apply. You're going to know if it applies based on what you're looking at in your citation. As we can see here, this is a pretty standard citation. Next, you're gonna wanna make sure that you've actually got the correct volume number, correct law review name, etc. So let's make sure we've got the 91st volume. Yep, you can see that in the article. You can also see it's uh, 1992. And then you're gonna wanna make sure that the article actually started on page 323. When you're looking at the article, you can see it does. Now, in our citation, it's 323 comma 328. As you probably know from lawyering or legal research, you know, 323 is where the article begins. 328 is supposedly where the specific thing being cited was said within the article. Now, in your diagnostic exercise, you're going to want to fact check that. You're going to want to go to page 328 if this was being used and make sure that they said it at all somewhere and that it was said on that page. It is shockingly frequent how often authors will get a page number wrong for the citation so you want to be pretty careful with that the other issue is how you format the name of the law review publication which is the next thing that's brought up at the top of the rule it says consult tables t10 and t13 to abbreviate the names of periodicals there's no way to guess how you abbreviate this stuff. There are these huge tables that are weirdly thorough about how they want us to abbreviate stuff. So let's do it. The question's basically, how do you abbreviate Michigan Law Review? The tables are in the back of the blue book and they're in order too. So you've got like T1 through T like a million or something. T7, T9, T10. It tells you right here, is geographical terms. We've got Michigan and you can see right here, T10.1 is U.S. states, cities, and territories. Michigan is a U.S. state. So we're going to see Michigan. And we've got it right here, M-I-C-H dot. Make sure that's what you've got in your citation. Looks like we do. Since the rest of it isn't geographic, let's go to T13. Okay, T13, periodicals. It says, always use the title of the periodical that appears on the title page of the issue you are citing, even if the title of the periodical has changed over time. So, like, theoretically, if after 1992, Michigan Law Review had changed their name to Michigan Law Journal, doesn't matter. You're only going to be citing to what your article says. Blah, blah, blah. You can read all this stuff yourself. I'm not going to bore you by going through it. Anyways, we're looking for law review, and that's going to be a common word. So, L is first... Law gets abbreviated to L dot. So go ahead and make sure that's what your citation says. Let's find review. Review should be abbreviated to R E V. So you want to make sure that you've got that in there. And then you're going to want to go back to where you were in Rule 16. So we were in Rule 16.4. 
And then the other thing that you're going to notice, the names of the law review are supposed to be in small caps. You would have also seen that from the basic citation form. Small caps is easier to do in Microsoft Word. You're basically going to go into like format, font, and select small caps. So by now you've made sure that the page numbers are correct and that the year is correct. The only thing left to do after that is make sure there's a period at the end. That's pretty much it. So that pretty much sums up how I would edit a citation like this. I hope this was helpful. There are also more resources on the Twin page, so feel free to check that out. You're gonna do great. So yeah, good luck.